What's up everyone, Doyler here, and I'm back with another Idle Heroes Guide. Before I get started, I want to introduce a new sort of series and um, part of my video is called Sushi Says. This was suggested me to by a viewer and I'm really loving it. So what I'm going to be doing at the end of most of my videos now is either giving a viewer shout out or answering a viewer question that comes from my comments in a recent video. Um, and Sushi's going to be doing the answering for you guys, so if you're not familiar, Sushi is my newly adopted pup that has been showing up in a lot of the videos and streams. So, I will not tell the, say the user yet, but today's question that will be answered at the end is, I have an E5 Tix, E5 Russell, E5 Sherlock, and E5 Penny. Is it worth it to swap my Penny for a Nasuke to fit better with my team? So again, be sure to stick around until the end of the video to have see Sushi answer that question. And definitely hit those like and subscribe buttons if you appreciate my Idle Heroes instructional content. So, with that out of the way, let's jump into my guide to crowd control, control immunity, control precision, Rui Scepter, and what all of it means and how all of it works. First of all, what is crowd control? If you're not familiar, crowd control in really any RPG, but particularly Idle Heroes, is sort of um, the ability to lock down your opponent and prevent them from doing something. So in Idle Heroes, we have things like stuns. Um, so Cruz's passive skill gives a stun. We've got freeze, twine, and so on. The best way currently to figure out what all of the different crowd control methods are is to go into your guild, go to guild tech, go to tier two, and look at these four nodes. These are going to be your anti-crowd control, or CC, tech. So we've got seal of light immunity and shape-shifting immunity. So this is gonna be from Terra and Sherlock specifically. We've got Taunt Immunity and Dazzle Immunity. This is going to come from primarily Unimax. Dazzle will come from only Russell for now. We've got Petrify, Twine, and Horrify Immunity. There are a number of heroes that give out these effects, but for example, we've got um, DA. This is when you look like a stone. We've got Flora, who will wrap you up in vines, and we've got Aspen, who will put that little scary skull on you. And last up, we have Stun, Freeze, and Silence. So, stun is going to be like Fire Fist, it will be the spinning circles above your head. Freeze, pretty self-explanatory, you'll turn to ice, for example, from Sierra. And silence, you won't be able to use active skills, for example, from Demon Hunter. And if you always want a refresher on what these skills do, you can go to a hero that has one of them, and now DH Games has added these descriptions. So, for example, if we slide on over to Demon Hunter, we go to her active, Silence is an orange, so if we go to silence, it's a control effect. Heroes being silenced are unable to release their active skill. So that's all of the different control effects. Let's watch them in action real quick. So we're going to send my Sherlock, who, if you're not familiar, has a control effect on both his basic and his active called shape-shifting. So shape-shifting is a control effect that turns a target to a dove. They can't do anything, including trigger passive skills, and once they get hit by three basics or actives, they will pop out. So if you fought or used a Sherlock before, you know your opponents turn into doves. This is his control effect, and it is affected by everything else we're going to be talking about today. So I'll send him my Sherlock with a deer, just to keep him alive and show him off against the Abyss meme team. So as you can see, he fired off a basic, did not get a dove. He will be taking another attack. This Sherlock fired off a basic, did not get a dove. But now my active dove two targets like I showed in the text. So these two targets will be doved and will not escape for three rounds. His basic fired off against Ignis but did not dove her and so on. So if we watch, he'll keep going. He managed to dove the other um, Sherlock, or Siggy now. Um, still has the Ignis, Cthuga, and Delosium who are not dove. But given a few rounds, he'll get the Cthuga. He'll keep going. But as you can see, they stay in this form of CC because they're not being hit enough. And his active and basic can both trigger this effect. So this is why you see a lot of people discussing Sherlock and talking about him, especially when it comes to crowd control and control immunity. So we'll watch this fight just to show off really the best example of crowd control and how, I mean, one good CC hero at E5 can beat two E5 heroes and a full team with Aura. Hopefully he can beat it. Uh, last time I tested this, it did work. So as you can see, he's gotten some HP swaps off. He's killed the Delosium, and he has every other hero dub. So the opposing team can't do anything to him, and he's just able to crowd control them through a ton of rounds, finally winning the fight in round 37. 
So that is what a crowd control effect is. Now I want to discuss how it works, what precision and immunity are, and then give some real game examples. First, I'm going to cover control immunity, since control precision is sort of a direct counter to this. So control immunity, like I showed in Guild Tech, and like you can sort of hear here from the description, is it makes your heroes immune to these control effects. So as you can see, if you max out your Guild Tech, you can get a 20% immunity to shapeshifting. The other ways you can get control immunity are base hero stats. So for instance, if we take a look at Sherlock, he has 0% control immunity, but a hero like... Yes, so Tix has 35% control immunity, just baked into the hero. Another way to get control immunity is from specific skins. So as you can see, the Sherlock skin also gives control immunity. The Guild Tech, which I just showed off. Hero auras, so depending on the heroes you put in your teams. So for instance, if we were to add light and dark heroes, we would get 4% control immunity for each of them and 3% control immunity for each Transcendence Faction hero. And finally, from, or sorry, there's two more. So, um, Avatar frames can give control immunity. So as you can see, the Black Diamond frame give 9%. And last up, Void enables can give control immunity when you get them on a Transcendence hero. So these nodes that are normally purple on a Transcendence hero, they can have control immunity up to 35%. I don't have one to show off, but trust me there. So these are all additive. So for example, if you have 0% on your hero, 6% from your skin, 20% from your tech, 16% from an aura, and 35% from your void, you'll have 77% control immunity. Now, this doesn't directly counter the control effect. So for example, Sherlock's active is not 100% minus 77%, it's a multiplier. So 100% control immunity does not fully counteract a 100% control effect. So it is a, a multiplier and not a direct subtraction. And I will cover the formula in a second. So let's slide on over to my images and let me give you an example of the formula. Note that this formula is from the private server, so the part we're going to ignore is the second part of the formula that talks about block reduction. That said, the basic control formula in the current game is the CC chance, so in this stun chance, times the control immunity. So in this case, it would be 50% times 1 minus 0.7%. That said, this image came out before control precision was introduced to the game. So right now, the only method of control precision is the Rui Scepter, which as you can see, gives 50% control precision. Now control precision works um, similarly to the way that actual precision works as far as block is concerned. This is an additive bonus to your actual control chance. So generally speaking, your control chance is one. It's just a flat multiplier. We don't see it in that formula because it doesn't matter. So for Cruz, for, ex for Sherlock, for example, it would be 100% for the first part is active. Time your times your control chance or your control precision. So in this case, it would be one times the one minus the control immunity of our foes. So for example, if we were fighting 77%, it would be one minus 77%. And that would give us our CC rate. Rui Scepter is an additive bonus to that hidden multiplier we didn't see before. So in that case, it would turn to 100% times 1.5, because the control precision is added to that, times the 23% chance after the control immunity. So just a quick example, if we hop right back in that same fight with the Rui Scepter, we'll see that we get doves much quicker and are able to CC the heroes in a much faster manner. So as you see, we're going to be able to get dubs much quicker because we are multiplying our chance by 1.5% instead of just a flat 1. So we CC'd Cthulhu with our basic. We've already got Sigmund CC'd. I'll go until we get to our second active, but by then we should have 3 to 5 heroes fully controlled um, once we get out of the dove ourselves. So as you can see, we've already got 4 heroes CC'd. 
We're not as survivable with the Receptor, so we might actually lose this fight, which we do. But as you saw, we got the CCs much quicker in this manner. So that sort of covers control precision and how the base Rui Scepter works. Last up, I want to touch on how the upgraded Rui Scepter works, which is Eye of Insights. So this offsets the target 10, 20, or 30% of control immune. Now, this is a direct counter to control immunity. So for example, in the previous 77% chance, the Final modifier, or the final part of the formula, would have been times 1 minus 0 0.77, because 1 was the base chance, and they had 77% chance immunity, giving us a 23% chance to stun, or a 23% chance to control them after our attempt. So if we had 100% chance, it would be 100% times 23%, and so on. With the upgraded Rui Scepter, this will directly counter-attack them counter effect this so we would have one minus 77 percent plus in this case 20 percent so it would end up being um sorry yeah so it'd be one minus 77 percent plus 20 percent so the final modifier would be a 43 percent chance so again this can be a little confusing i will include these formulas and examples in the description but let's cover some real examples to sort of help you understand this a little bit better. So the first one I want to cover is Flora. Flora, and let's go back to the game just so you can see her control chance and have a better understanding before I go into the math. So Flora's active, bounces around all of the enemies, and has an increasing chance to twine them. So the first hero she hits, assuming all six heroes are up, the first hero she hits will have a 30% chance for twine, the second will be 35 then 40, then 45, then 50, then 55 percent chance. So how does that work when it comes to these formulas? So as you can see, the very first column A is the very base CC rate. So 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. With no other modifiers, so no increased control chance and no um, control immunity on the other side, on average, Flora will twine 2.55 out of six enemies. If we give her a base Rui Scepter, so it gives her that 50% control precision, as you can see, that 30% is multiplied by 1.5, for 45, or is, has 1.5%, yeah, is multiplied by 50, 150%, turning it to 45%, and so on. So that means, on average, she will twine 3.825 heroes with the upgraded rates. If we were to give her a Splendid Rui and no Control Immunity on the other team, her rates would go up to 88%, 102%, and so on. So she would CC on average 7.4. Note that these are capped and it will end up just CCing 5 or 6. And finally, if they have 77% Control Immunity, she will on average twine 5.9 heroes. Another example is going to be a 5-star Cruise. This example I was testing for my Minimal Abyss Sea Land Clear. Um, so he has a 25% base chance. So if I were to give him a Splendid Rui Scepter and they were to have even higher CC rates than they have, he would stun an average 2.35 heroes. Now, these are sort of um, specific or more esoteric examples, but two more I want to cover are a minimal Fortress Seal Land Clear with Sherlock and Penny. So at that point, your options are running four Fire Fist or four Sierras. So Fire Fist has an 80% chance to target your minion with a 100% chance to stun. And after the control immunity of 30% seal end, he will on average stun 0.57 of them. If you break all of this down, this means on average, your four Fire Fists will stun 1.9 of the seal end enemies. Now, Sierra has a 100% chance to target every minion, but only has a 15% chance to freeze, which is down to 10.5% after control immunity. If you break all of this down, and I'll include the math in the description, this means that Sierra actually only freezes 1.68 enemies on average, making a 3-star Fire Fist better than a 4 or 5-star Sierra for Sealand. Finally, a PvP example. If you have your own Sherlock, he uses his active, 
with a Splendid Rui, and you are targeting, let's say, two um, heroes with 77% control immunity, like I said before. In the end, you'll have a 79.5% chance to CC your first target, and a 51% chance to CC your second target, which, generally speaking, you'll get, you know, 1.4 of them. So I know this video ran a little long, and hopefully I explained everything I could about control, crowd control, control precision, control immunity, and how Rui Scepter works. But let me know in the comments if you still have any questions about these features, and I'll include all of my text and formulas and links in the description. So that's going to be it for this one. Let's get back to Sushi Says and have her answer the viewer submitted question. So again, this is from Z Zombie. So shout outs to Z Zombie. Again, the question was, I have an E5 Tix, an E5 Russell, E5 Sherlock, and E5 Penny. Is it worth it to swap my Penny for a Nasuke to fit better with my team? Now, Sushi says, certainly, if you have the Soul Stones. Swapping a hero means you're only going to lose nine copies of a specific hero, in this case, Penny. So you lose out on a little bit of food, but a hero you're not really going to lose anymore. Inasuke is going to be better for you in the Void, as well as Sealand and Aspen Dungeon, if for some reason you haven't cleared Death 1 and Sealand 20 with Sherlock and Penny, which you should have. And having a Russell means you already have plenty of PvE damage for Flame Shrine and Broken Spaces, so Inasuke is only going to be a direct upgrade to your team at the loss of a few food heroes. So that's going to be it for this one. Again, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want a chance to win that 3,000 subscriber CD key giveaway. And we'll catch you guys tomorrow.